Are you ready to take your game capture and game streaming to the next level? Are you interested in playing at 4K or HDR, but you don't want to stream or capture that because you're not a nerd? Elgato's HD60S Plus might be the card for you. We'll find out after a word from this video's sponsor. There are not one, but two new Mon Mics in town. Say what? The Mon Mic USB makes your dreams come true. Clean, consistent USB power, premium analog to digital conversion, high quality preamp, new unidirectional capsule from the Mod Mic Wireless, and an omnidirectional capsule with the dual microphone capability, a smooth, sweet digital mute switch, all in a USB connection. There's a first time for everything. U.S.B. And for those unafraid of analog connections, the Mod Mic Uni houses the new unidirectional mic capsule with noise cancellation, RF shielding, and a godlike signal-to-noise ratio in a convenient 3.5 millimeter analog form factor and a new mute switch. Pick yours up today at AntLionAudio.com or the link in the video description. You can mod my mic any day. Apples Fox here and welcome back to Stream Guides. Today we're taking a look at Elgato's latest capture card, the Elgato HD60S Plus, which is their newest 4K sort of capable USB capture card. This thing is available for about 200 bucks right now as the MSRP and current price. Although if we're basing it off the HD60S, you can see it as low as 150 bucks on sales, especially since we have holiday sales coming very soon with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and all of the Christmas holiday season extravaganzas. Uh, and this capture card is geared towards users who want to play in 4K or HDR and, you know, want the forward compatibility with the latest and greatest gaming consoles and TV technology, but are streaming and don't need to stream or capture 4K because in most cases, if you're live streaming, you're not streaming in 4K anyway. If you are, I have a whole video on what you need to set that up linked in the video description. And a lot of people just don't have the specs required to capture 4K. They just want to play in 4K and capture like they always have in 1080p or 720p or what have you. This thing will do it. Uh, <laughs> specs wise, it is a USB-C and that's 3.2 or 3.1 Gen 1 capture card. So five gigabits per second. It has 4K 60 Hertz pass through up to 1080p 60 capture. It can capture HDR as well, or it can do HDR to SDR tone mapping on the fly so that if you're playing in HDR, you don't have the crazy washed out or oversaturated colors. You have a normal looking image, which is pretty cool. They don't advertise this, but the spec sheet does say that it supports 4K 30. And I was thinking this might be with like some of the competition, which we'll talk about in a minute, like the Live Gamer Ultra, which can capture in 4K 30 FPS if you send it a 4K 60 signal. However, this does not seem to be the case. If I pass through a 4K 60 signal in OBS period, all you get the option for is 1080p. In the Elgato 4K capture utility, you can set it to 4K 30, but then it only captures 1080p 30, and it seems like the 4K 30 option only works with an actual 4K 30 hertz signal, which I'm just not even going to bother to hook up because that's going to be very rare. It does not have any support for PC formats, though. So if you're at 1440p, does not seem to work whatsoever. So that also includes anything over 60 hertz. So 1080p 120, 1080p 144, 1080p 240, doesn't matter. 1440p or anything in between 1080p and 4k are probably not going to work so that's a little disappointing and we'll talk about another capture card that does that in a moment along with 4k pass through support and 1080p capture it does still support 720p and it supports 1080i and unlike elgato's other capture cards the 1080i is actually passed to your recording software in interlaced format which a lot of users based on comments i've seen well, it would actually prefer this, but that does mean in like OBS, you will need to apply a deinterlacing filter. So here's how it looks with interlaced versus Yadif 2X. Again, it does do HDR to SDR tone mapping, which is pretty cool. It does have a 3.5 millimeter input for routing audio into it. However, this is more suited for hooking it up to something like the Go XLR or Go XLR Mini, which can give you a line out and mixes your console and your microphone and your alert sound and things like that to run into the capture card. Because unlike the Razer Ripsaw HD, which gives you a separate audio device that you can then add into OBS and mix on the fly, or even like all the generic capture cards that give you their own mixing app to mix the levels of the mic input with the HDMI input, you can only choose one or the other. So this isn't available at all in OBS, but in 4K capture utility, you can choose an audio source, and that's either HDMI audio or analog audio, not a mix of both. 
So that's really unfortunate. That just feels kind of half-assed and eh, but it's what you got available. Most people don't use the live commentary feature on it anyway, but that's fine. As far as physical build goes, you of course get the little like weird wafer black plastic design. Overall, this is nice. It holds up. It's been the same since the HD60 original and sort of you know, reminiscent of the original Game Capture HD. I do, however, find the inputs and outputs being on opposite sides to just be a horrible design, in my opinion. It looks cool in their product shots when they have it like in between a signal chain and you see the logo and everything lighting up. It does have LED indicators if you're using Elgato software for capturing. But when you're using it in a setup when everything's in one direction, it just gets really awkward and you end up bending your cables and stressing the ports a lot. And I'm just really not a fan of it. I'd prefer to just have even though this is unique, every other capture card kind of has the same box with ports on the back design. This is them doing their own unique thing. I'd still much rather just have all the ports on one side on the back or something. And, uh, that's just me. As far as competition to this capture card goes, you have the Avermedia Live Gamer Ultra, which retailed for $250 but is regularly on sale for $200, the same price as this, which does have PC support for high refresh rate, 1440p, things like that, both pass through and capture to some degree, although there are limitations with the USB connection. It can do all of that which this one does not do. So for the same price, that one's a better value, you know, in the moment. Then you have the Razer Ripsaw HD, which does not have any HDR support whatsoever, uh, but does have these separate audio devices. And that one's available for about 159 at the moment. So if you aren't interested in HDR, although keep in mind you might be in the future, but if you're currently not interested in HDR and you really want to use the live commentary integration stuff, Razer Ripsaw might be a better choice, but I find it hard to recommend. It is cheaper though, but... And then for even cheaper, you have the Pingo 4K HDMI grabber that I reviewed, I guess, last year or at the start of this year, which again is 4K pass through 1080p capture, but it has no audio support and no, you know, no, no analog audio support and no HDR support whatsoever. So that's available to you. Speaking of co comparing to the competition, as far as input latency to an OBS full screen preview go, this is a test I use with both a Leo Bodnar monitor latency checker as well as the Time Sleuth latency checker. Uh, to a full screen OBS preview on my normal 4K monitor, this generates a, an input latency of about 61 milliseconds on average. It kind of jumped all over the place. A lot of capture cards do that, but the consistent average that I got was about 61 milliseconds, which is a little bit slower than most of the competition other than the Razer Ripsaw, uh, but it equates out to about three or four frames of input lag compared to real time, which is pretty good. Like it, it's slower than the Live Gamer Ultra or the Pingo, which the Pingo was ridiculously fast, but it's still way fast. Like it's still plenty fast enough for you to be able to keep like no one's going to notice if your audio is like three frames out of sync and it's easy to put in, you know, a like 60 millisecond delay with an OBS to sync it up or something like that. As far as video goes, uh, the quality is great. It holds up great. You got the 4K 60 down sampled to 1080p and of course, you have you do have a bitrate limitation, quote unquote, in Elgato software, and that always throws everybody for a loop. That's not a real limitation of the device. The device will give an uncompressed signal up to the cap of USB's bandwidth, pretty much. Um, and this does support YUY2, which is 422 color space, which is really nice. Most of Elgato's capture cards are NV12, only 420. This is 422, which is substantially better. You get uncompressed YUY2 feed straight into OBS. Really, really nice. High quality feed. Video captures look great. I've tested in a wide gamut of games on the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X and playing 360 backwards compatibility games. Have had a lot of fun during my testing of this capture card. Looks really good. And it held up for long term recordings without really getting warm whatsoever, which was fairly impressive. I played like three or four hours straight of Halo Reach running uh, with my buddy BBK Dragoon and never had any issues. Works out really great. I did mention earlier. This has UVC drivers. Elgato has been making a stand or a move with their 4K 60 Pro Mark II and now this to moving to not developing their own weird proprietary drivers or spinoffs maybe of the Yuan drivers, I'm not sure. Uh, that kind of caused problems and like the original HD60S had huge problems on Mac to the extent that you basically had to run their Elgato software and then loop that through to OBS if you wanted to use the HD60S on Mac with OBS. A lot of weird stuff with their drivers and it limits operating system compatibility. While the 4K60 Pro Mark II uses direct, direct show drivers, which work a lot better and allows them to do the multi software device capability. This one cannot be used in multiple programs at once, which is disappointing, but it is UVC capable, which is universal video class. This means that it's plug and play and works on Windows, Mac and Linux. I did test it in Ubuntu working totally fine, way better than most of the capture cards that sort of work in Linux. Just worked right out of the box, detected the 422 stream, ready to go in OBS. 
that was really nice to see. And it means it will work in chatting apps as a webcam in programs like Skype or Discord. Just keep in mind, Discord specifically uh, flips the camera to like mirror it, which means all of your gameplay stuff would be mirrored backwards, which is really annoying. I've reached out to them about it. I don't know if they actually plan on fixing it, but hey, that's a thing. UVC drivers also means that the program compatibility for capturing your gameplays would be a lot more expanded. So if you're looking for something dead simple to just cap capture basic gameplays, you can actually just use the Windows 10 camera app and it will integrate as if it was a webcam and you can take screenshots or record video at 1080p 60fps, which looks pretty good for just sharing to social media and things like that. And I was actually quite surprised. You're watching gameplay now recorded with the Windows 10 camera app and you know, it's not going to be as high bitrate as the lossless stuff you can get out of OBS, but it's fine. Like for most people, it's totally fine. Really cool to see that all of this compatibility is smoothed out without any crazy workarounds. And this honestly with, since it is UVC, that does mean you can use either the included USB-C to type A cable included in the box, or you can use a C to C cable. I've had trouble with that with the HD60S and with other some other USB capture cards that don't have UVC is going straight USB-C to C. The drivers don't like that. With this, I even had it connected to the virtual link point port on my uh, NVIDIA Titan RTX graphics card. They all have USB-C jacks on it. Had it connected to that with a USB-C to C cable. Had no problems whatsoever. So that is really nice to see. This is Remy. She has a lot to say about this capture card that she won't let me finish the video. What you got to say? So while it's double the cost and I can't, you know, in good faith recommend people buy something that's twice expensive unless they really think it's worth it, uh, it does make it essentially a more reliable cam link. Because the cam link has some issues with like black screening and some weird just you gotta replug it a couple times after launching again that I've yet to really get worked out with Elgato. I've not had such an issue with their other capture cards, including the HD60S Plus, so it makes it a much more reliable cam link since it serves the same purpose using UVC drivers. You wouldn't be able to capture any sort of 4K, well, if you send it a 4K 30 signal, it might work, but you would be able to pass through a 4K 60 capable webcam or camera, like a GH5 or something, and just capture 1080p 60 for your stream if that's what you want. So that's pretty cool too, but that's a weird use case for it. Overall, this is a great capture card for those who want to play in 4K or in just live stream normal 1080p or 720p gameplay without the specs required or the storage space required or just at all messing with actual 4K capture. You can play in HDR and capture in SDR via OBS or Elgato's app or in Elgato's software, you can actually capture the HDR recording itself as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, product links, as always, will be in the description below. They will be Amazon affiliate links where you can give a small kickback to the channel at no extra cost to you. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. Check out the playlist link in the video description where you can see all of my other capture card reviews, including the other ones that I mentioned that I was comparing it to down there. Uh, subscribe on Floatplane where you can get early access to video and behind the scenes content. Thank you for watching this episode of Stream Guides. I'm Eeplesvox. I'll see you next time.